Hi everyone, uh, it's me, Mr. Derby again. I uh, hope you all had a wonderful weekend and enjoyed celebrating Mother's Day. Um, if you forgot about Mother's Day, it's not too late. In my experience, it's better late than never. Um, so definitely, you know, wish your mom a happy Mother's Day if you didn't, didn't yesterday. Uh, hopefully, you know, it's a little bit, a little bit rainy out today. Uh, hopefully the weather clears up a little bit better. I'm looking forward to uh, next Wednesday, potentially, I've heard the uh, excuse me, Governor Lamont uh, is going to be reopening some businesses. I'm sure some in Middletown will reopen as well. Um, so hopefully we'll start getting back to normal um, just a little bit at a time. Anyway, uh, we're going to continue talking about trigonometry this week. Um, we're going to talk about this topic, coordinates on the unit circle. So um, let's get into it. I'll tell you what, my, what business am I looking forward to the most? I'm looking forward to, uh, to the barbershop opening again. I could really use a haircut. <laughs> uh, let me know in the comments in private, in the private comments or, or actually public comments, more, make it more fun. Um, what business are you looking forward to? opening reopening the most um let me know below let's let's have a little fun okay here's our first question uh, i always like to start off with something like this um agree or disagree drag the point to show how much you agree or disagree with this statement i can't wait for summer to get here hmm all right so go ahead oh i forgot to print up my pause screen let me do that where's my pause screen here there we go. Um, go ahead and answer that question. Agree or disagree? Okay, so I've gone in and answered my, my answer. I'm definitely looking forward to summer, uh, coronavirus or not, just to have better weather and spend more time outside with my family and friends. Um, and I'm going to share this. Actually, I haven't been sharing this with the class because some sometimes I've been asking like pretty personal questions, like, you know, what, what are you stressed about or how are you feeling lately? And I don't know if anyone if you're going to want to share that. So for this time though, I want to try to encourage more connections between um, between all of you. So so just letting you know that other people will be able to see your responses here. Okay. So today we are going to talk about some special angles on the unit circle. 100% um, <laughs> of all Algebra 2 students either have or will Google an image of the unit circle and find something like this. Hashtag made up stats. Um, no, but it's seriously like this is another kind of rite of passage in Algebra 2 um, is, is kind of studying the unit circle as it relates to trigonometry. Um, so in this activity, our goal is going to be to memorize these special angles, um, what we're calling special angles. If you'll notice, there's only a few dots on this unit circle, um, and understand where their coordinates come from, and then use them to mentally calculate certain trigonometric values, like sine, cosine, tangent is one I don't think I mentioned last time. And there's others. Um, someone had a comment in the last lesson about uh, how much of this is going to be used in pre-calc versus the other stuff that we've done. Um, I'll tell you that basically everything in the second half of the year that we've done in Algebra 2, you'll extend in pre-calculus if you take pre-calc next year. Some of you might take stats. That's totally cool. The way I view it is there's always two paths that you can take after Algebra 2. Um, and I recommend either of them, depending on what kind of subject or course that you plan on taking in college or later in life. Um, personally, I know a lot of people tend to get just pushed down the pre-calc path. But, um, but personally, I think that if you're going to go into a field like um, you know, medicine, biology, um, finance, anything of that sort, statistics can actually be more useful to you 
in the long run. So I think both paths are equally um, equally valuable um, to you. And Mr. Cohen teaches AP stats, so he's awesome. I, I love it. I love him. Um, yeah, weird, but uh, but definitely like consider taking that next year if you haven't. I don't, you've probably already done course selection and all that, but anyway, um, in pre-calc you'll learn you'll study this more. In fact, this is often this unit circle, this sort of image, is often the um, in the past has been like the first thing that the pre-calc teachers in honors pre-calculus um, will throw at you and say, how much do you remember? Um, and it's like day one, first quiz of the year kind of thing. Um, maybe not day one, but like day two. They probably won't do that next year because of all this uh, you know, distance learning going on at the end of the year this year. But to, traditionally, that's what they've done. So this is pretty important. Um, stuff like logarithms, you know, that's kind of important too. But they'll they'll re refresh your memory about that. This stuff is kind of like the heart of precalculus trigonometry. So they will expect you to know this um, walking in. Anyway, with that in mind, um, why don't you take a look and then share any three patterns that you see in this image? Go ahead. Uh, Think about any any patterns that you notice. Try to try to write down three of them. I'm gonna pause the screen. Um, go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I'm gonna flip back here. Um, I'm intentionally gonna not write down any patterns that I notice because I I, I know a lot about this, um, and I'm really curious what you see, and I want you to kind of see what other people have to say about it. So I'm gonna skip this for now. But I want you to actually do that if you haven't. Um, actually, before we move on, um, maybe let me show you something. I wanted to show you a screen from last time that's related to related to this that we're going to talk about today. Last time, the the final question was an explanation challenge question. And I want to bring this up because one, I mean, I want to show you how this is what I see as a teacher when I go back and look at kind of all of your answers to these questions. Um, I can kind of see what you drew if you drew anything, which is kind of nice. Um, sorry if, if if I'm embarrassing anyone with their drawings here or or their answers, but um, but anyway, this was the final explanation challenge question that I had asked. Uh, in in precalculus, you'll you'll talk about a lot of trig identities. Uh, sort of like equations that are always true um, about some of the trig functions, like sine and cosine. And this one in particular is the most kind of the most used trig identity that you will see. And I thought maybe you might be able to help explain it. And it, it's totally okay if you didn't know. But I thought I would go back to it because we're going to use it again in today's lesson. Um, basically, what does this say? This says cosine of an angle. The cosine of an angle, if you square it, plus the sine of the angle squared is equal to 1. Cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. Why is that true? And actually, I saw some really great answers here. Um, Alyssa, thank, thanks, Alyssa. She said, I'm not exactly sure, but it's related to the Pythagorean theorem. And oh my god, even though you're not exactly sure, you hit the nail right on the head. It is exactly the Pythagorean theorem. That's all it says. So let me let me pull up um, maybe Beatrice's picture here. Sorry, Beatrice, if I'm embarrassing you. Um, but she drew a picture for this angle, this you know just random angle I chose. Um, and she said, okay, this side is the cosine, right? Because cosine is like maybe I can draw on her thing. I don't know. Cosine is like the x coordinate, right? The cosine of the angle is the adjacent side. And then this side is the sine of the angle. That's the, the y coordinate. Oh man. Um, and so what is this really saying? This says that cosine or x, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. And that's just the Pythagorean theorem. It's literally just that. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c squared is 
the radius, which is one. That's all it is. And we're gonna kind of use that again today to talk about these coordinates. So I thought I'd bring that up. Um, by the way, Clara had a really nice explanation of this too. It's the Pythagorean theorem and the hypotenuse is one. I saw a bunch of other people say the radius is one and that's exactly right. The, ra the radius is one and that's part of the, that's C squared in this identity. That's really all this is. All right. So uh, let me go back here and go to this next screen. Okay, before we get to the coordinates of these special angles, I want to see if you can remember or figure out the values of these angles um, in degrees and then in radians. So how many different angles are on here? Right, I think there's actually 16. There's 16 different angles that we're calling um, special angles. And, and really, I mean, what's special about them? Uh, we'll, we'll see. But there's only 16 of them, and they're kind of like the ones that, there's really nothing special about them, but they're the ones that are typically sort of like memorized. Um, I don't know why I air quoted there. But they're the ones that are memorized uh, for pre-calculus students. So there's 16 of these special angles. But first, I want you to, I don't care about the coordinates. I just want to talk about the angles that these make. Um, here's some of the angles. So the unit circle has been divided into 12, 12 arcs. What's the degree measure? What's the angle measure in degrees between each one? <clears throat> Think about it for a second. It's not too hard. Um, I'll just, I'll just pause like kind of briefly here. So if you're thinking, nine, no, it's definitely not nine degrees, 90 degrees between each of these, right? Uh, it's not 45, it's not 60, it's actually 30 degrees is the angle made by each of these. And if you want, you can use the line tool here. You can kind of draw this angle um, here. This is the angle that's, that I'm talking about, that's 30 degrees. Okay. Um, after you figure that out, try to label the angle measure made by each point on the unit circle. So what I mean by that is if this angle, and I'm just going to write with my mouse here, it's not going to be pretty, it's fine. If you have a nice little like a pen or stylus, uh, feel free to use it. Um, but go ahead and measure eat or label each angle that these make. Um, why is that important? Eh, it's just kind of nice to kind of build this visual memory of these angles on the unit circle. Uh, I'll pause for a second. Go ahead and do it yourselves. Okay, so hopefully you've gone through and started labeling some of these in degrees, right? If this is 30 degrees, um, and these are all equal, I'm saying, equally spaced apart, then this next one would be 60 degrees, right? Um, this would be 90 degrees, right? What would come next? Uh, this angle would be 120 degrees, and so on and so forth, right? And how do you get that? Well, they're each spaced 30 degrees apart, so you could just add 30 degrees to each one. Um, maybe I'll write that in here. You can add 30 degrees. Uh, can I copy this? How do you do the degrees sign? Maybe I can copy it. You can add 30 degrees to each angle, starting at zero, right? Because this, this one down here, if it was just like this point, this point is zero degrees. Uh, which is also another good business that I hope will reopen soon. Uh, down, downtown, <laughs> ice cream shop, very expensive though. Okay, anyway, um, so hopefully you can go around and label all of these. When you come back around, I think you get to like 3.30, right? And then coming back all the way, zero degrees is the same as 360. And then we kind of like start over. All right. Uh, 
I'll share this. Okay, what about, what's next? How about in radians? Okay, so last time we talked about radians. Let's see if we can figure out what is the angle measure between each of these in radians. In other, word, in other words, what's the equivalent of 30 degrees in radians? What is this angle? Um, in radians. See if you can figure that out. Remember, I'll give you a little hint. Remember how many radians are all the way around the circle? There are 2 pi. Right, pi is going to be a little tricky to write. But there are 2 pi radians in the whole circle. So see if you can figure this out. Okay, so hopefully you came up with the answer. Well, if this is all the way around is 2 pi, right? What's this one? That's halfway around, so that's 1 pi. My pi's are going to look weird. That's okay. I can always erase. If I don't like it, I can erase it. Um, and then, so how many pieces are in here? Let's see, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? There's six different equally length pieces or equally length arcs or equally length spaced angles. Um, there's six of them in here in pi. So this is a sixth. It's pi over six. Pi over six. Um, so that means that pi over six is the same as 30 degrees, right? And um, can we label each of these angles then in radians? So it's kind of like a little bit of a test here. Can we label each of these? Well, let's see. This is twice that, right? This is pi over 6. This is double that. So you could write, maybe I'll write this in a different color. Um, I'll do it in red. You could write that this is 2 pi over 6. Right? It's double it. But there's another way to write 2 pi over 6 that was supposed to be in equals. Um, because you can reduce this fraction. So this is actually also better known as pi over 3. OK, so that's 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. How about maybe I'll do go to this one. How about this one? This is 3 pi over 6, right? Or we could just say it's, here's pi, it's halfway, it's pi over 2. 3 pi over 6 will reduce to pi over 2. I know this is tricky to write. Um, how about the next one? I'm going to try to color code these because it's helpful to memorize them. I don't like that. I should have used the drawing. There's pi over 6. Or, sorry, pi over 3. Um, how about this next one? So this is 1, 2, 3 pi over 6. That means this is 4 pi over 6. But what's another way to write 4 pi over 6? Think about it for a second. You can reduce this to 2 pi over 3. That's what this angle is. OK, so that's this is 2 pi over 3. You can see it's 2 thirds of the way to pi. That's the way I always think about the radians. Like, think about it as just literally dividing up the, the pi, which is this with 0 to 180. Right? That's 2 thirds of the pi. And then this is, what's this? Is a fraction of the pi. Um, you could either count like one, two, three, four, five sixths, or you could just see visually it is five sixths of pi, of the pi. This is five pi over six. Okay? And keep going all the way around. Hopefully, what you'll see is a little bit of a pattern here with some of these angles 
um, and hopefully you'll notice this, why I'm color coding some of them red and some of them blue. But you should be able to label all the way around the circle and, um, and that'll help with uh, kind of the stuff later that we do. So for example, let me write, this is actually gonna be seven pi over six. This is gonna be 11 pi over six. And hopefully you can label all the points around, all the angles. Um, for me, how did I do it? I counted by pi over six. Make that a math thing. And reduced fractions. And that's how I did it. But there's a lot of different ways you could do it. Um, the goal is to start memorizing these angles, though. Okay, um, here's another unit circle. Now, this time it's divided into eight parts, eight arcs, right? What's the measure? What's the degrees between each of them? Oh, geez, I, why, why is this in uh, radians? Did I mess that up? I totally messed this up. I'll leave that. Give me a minute. So you know what? Uh, I don't want to lose my other work. So let me let me just write it here. What angle is this? What angle do you think this makes? I'm going to do this in green. Color code it differently. What angle do you think this makes in degrees? Even though it's I know these are all in radians here. What angle is this? If you're thinking, well, it's halfway. It looks like between zero and ninety. Yeah, right. It's forty-five degrees. This is one of the special angles we're going to look at. It's a 45 degree. Um, so I don't know which one of these. Let's just pick one for now. Um, and then what you can do is you can add 45 degrees. Each angle. All the way around. So you could go and label each of these. I'd, I'd like you to try that. Try it yourselves, because I want you to kind of get a feeling for what these angles are. For example, if I told you where is 225 degrees, I want you to know, like almost um, instinctively off the top of your head. Go ahead and do that. Okay, so let me go back here. Um, hopefully you did this. Let's see, we've got 45, right? This one's pretty easy, 45 degrees. Oh man, I'm gonna have to be so careful here. Don't rush, right? I feel like Bob Ross sometimes. Um, everything's a happy little accident. Uh, let's see, so 90 degrees, what's this angle right here? What's this 45 degree angle? If you said 135, you're correct. If you think about adding 45 degrees to 90, um, personally with the 45s, uh, this probably won't relate to most of you, but like I always think about like uh, like benching. If you put like 45s plates on the side on both sides, uh, you put two 45s on there. Um, anyway, you know the bar itself is 45. It's 135. Okay. Anyway, so uh, what else do we have? We've got 180. Uh, okay. Um, what's this angle down here? What what's this 45 degree angle? It should be 225. That's if you put two plates on both sides. Um, one, two, and two, the bar. Okay, anyway, uh, we've got 270, right? 270. Um, and then what's this one? This is 315. Um, 315 is this 45 degree angle, and we're back to 360. Okay, um, so that's those are the 45 degree angles um, that we're going to talk about. And then, how about in radians? Can we measure them? What would they look like in radians? What is this angle? 
same thing, but now in radians. Again, remember there's two pi all the way around, so this is this is a uh, one pi all the way around is two pi, or you know one tau, whatever. Um, so let's see if this is one pi. Well, this is we're dividing pi into how many pieces here? Let me do this. Right, one, two, three, four. So this is pi over four divided by four. Um, that's the fraction that it is. Oh, I should have paused there. Whoops. So can you go around now and label all of these pieces? Uh, let me pause and and do that because again, I'm trying to build this. I want you to try to build this intuition for what these angles are in degrees and radians. These just these special angles that we're going to talk about. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so hopefully you did this. Let's see, we've got pi over four. Two pi, two quarters is going to make a half, right? So we've got pi over two up top. You should always know this is pi over two. What's this one? Well, it's three quarters. So it's three pi over four. Three quarters. Uh, four quarters makes a whole pi. So what's this one down here? We're still going by quarters, right? This is kind of part of the intuition is that Quarters are 45 degrees. They're the same. They're equivalent to 45 degrees. Um, quarters. This is four quarters. This is, this is five quarters, right? Um, this is six quarters, but it's also a half. This is one half, two halves. So this is three halves. That was supposed to be a two. Excuse me. And then quarters again. So one quarter, two, three, four, five, six. That makes this seven quarters. Seven pi over four. So one thing I just want you to know, I want you to see anytime you see a pi over four, it's a 45 degree angle. These quarters. Okay. Um, how, how did I do it? I went by math pi over four on the circle okay so um so that's kind of those are our angles pi over four is the same as a 45 degree and if you notice these are all over four right if i go back to our other angles we had 30 degree angles and we had these other 60 degree angles, which I should have drawn in a different color. Um, and if we look here, all of the 30 degree angles are pi over six. So here's pi over six, here's five pi over six, seven pi over six, 11 pi over six. They're sixths, and the 60 degree angles in red are all pi over three. So anytime you see a pi over three, it's it's making a sixty degree angle with the x axis um, from from the x axis pi over three, which means this is also a some kind of pi over three. How many pi over threes is it? Well, here's one, two, three, four. It's four pi over three. Uh, this is going to be five pi over three. So pi over three is the same as is equivalent to a sixty degree angle from the x axis, um, and pi over six is the equivalent. Anytime there's a pi over six, it's an equivalent of a thirty degree angle from the x axis. All right, and forty fives are pi over four. All right, so now I want you to practice. I want you to try this on your own. Um, see if you can go ahead and label all of the angles, all of the special angles. We've, we've actually hit them all, all 16 special angles. Try to do degrees and radians. You could do degrees on the inside and radians on the outside. See if you can label all of them, um, all of these angles in both degrees and radians. This is going to be a good practice. This is kind of the kind of thing that I, I said like the pre-calc teachers would give you on uh, the first day, second day of school and say, label all the angles. Um, 
and expect you to actually be able to do that. So go ahead, practice. If you need to erase, if you need to go back and look at the other ones, um, try it on your own. I'm going to go back here. I'm not going to go back and label them all again. I want you to do it, um, but I'm not going to do it myself just for time, sake of time. But I, I do want you to try this. I'll take a look at this slide later um, and see how well you did. And I suggest color coding. I, I super suggest doing like the doing the the 45 degree angles in one color, for example, green, because the denominator of those is always going to be the same. Um, maybe you could, if you want to follow my color scheme, you could do the 60 degree angles, these ones up here, in like an, in red or some other color, um, and do like the 30 degree angles in a blue color, because those are all going to have the same denominators, different colors. Might have been one of the patterns that you noticed, um, or maybe not, I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and skip this, and then I'm going to say, here's another th way you can practice um, kind of building this connection um, between the angles and the, the, the visual of the angles, where they are around the unit circle, with the measure of the angle in radians. So go ahead and try pairing these up. Um, there might be, yeah, because I didn't change it. There might be a couple of the of pictures where there's more than one angle, like one or like two angles in radians that match up with it. So go ahead and try this. I'm going to pause the video and call this part one for now. Um, but I want you to try this out. See if you can match them up. Remember, the denominator is the key to knowing where it is on the unit circle. All right. Um, I'll stop it now and go ahead and try this on your own. All right, and then part two, we'll, we'll move on.